Now that's a good way to start a service, that's for sure. I would want to welcome everyone here. I would like to wish you a happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday. Christ is risen. Do you believe it? Yeah, I hope you believe it. it is, uh, it's the reason we're here together today. Uh, this is a special service, and it's uh, uh, different than what we would normally do, but it's also better than what we had last year in that we weren't able to gather at all in, uh, in the sanctuary. Uh, this year, we have a small group of people who are here. And I was thinking it was interesting. We always seem to anticipate uh, what we're allowed to do. And so often we've uh, chosen to close the church just before the government says we need to close. And this time we decided that we would have a very small group of people here. And that happened just before the government uh, made the numbers go smaller. So it's almost like we're anticipating or else the government is looking to Queen Street Baptist Church to know how to deal with the pandemic one way or the other. But we're, we're glad that, that we are able to have some people here. And for the rest of you who are watching online, we also want to wish God's blessings upon you as well. We have a few announcements to bring to your attention. The first thing is, uh, it is Communion Sunday, and uh, it's great for us to be celebrating communion on Easter Sunday. So for those here in the sanctuary, if you didn't get one when you came in, make sure to get uh, one of our little cups. And uh, for those at home, if you want to make sure that you have some bread and some juice with you for the communion part of the service, that would be helpful. Uh, Just a few announcements. We have an ongoing uh, Bible study on the Gospel of John, and that's uh, Tuesdays at 1030 on Zoom. And we're also going to change things a little bit. Uh, We had started a a sermon discussion group, and we're uh, going to combine that with our Zoom fellowship, which is not happening today because we have some in-person worship. But starting next week, uh, the first part of it will be just time for you to fellowship. So if that's all you want to do, if you just want to uh, visit with people online after the service, you're welcome to do that. And then after that, we're going to have a little bit of just informal discussion about the sermon, and we'll see how that goes. So that'll start next week. Our missions giving it this quarter is to Camp Oneida, and some great things are happening at Camp Oneida. They're doing a lot of work to make sure that everything is going well. So uh, please consider giving to Camp Oneida. And you can do that just by putting on your uh, envelope uh, missions or camp or Oneida or something like that, and people will figure it out. And I'm really excited about our two-ton challenge. I haven't really been given the numbers uh, in the last couple of months, but things are really looking well. So we just finished our first quarter, and that means if for us to get to our 4,000 pounds, we need to have gotten 1,000 pounds by the end of the first quarter. We actually have 1,564 pounds. So we're 31% collected, whereas if we were just following what we were trying to do, we would have been only at 25%. So we're actually doing extremely well with the two-ton challenge and encourage you to just grab a couple of extra things when you go grocery shopping or if you want to give money, that is also very welcome. And uh, I am around on Thursdays at between 10.30 and 11.30 and it's great because I get to visit a little bit with people as they bring things in also. So thank you for doing that. We are going to have the reading of our psalm, and this Sunday, it is Psalm 72. God, give your judgments to the king. Give your righteousness to the king's son. Let him judge your people with righteousness and your poor ones with justice. Let the mountains bring peace to the people. Let the hills bring righteousness. Let the king bring justice to people who are poor. Let him save the children of those who are needy, but let him crush oppressors. Let the king live as long as the sun, as long as the moon, generation to generation. Let him fall like rain upon fresh-cut grass, like showers that water the earth. Let the righteous flourish throughout their lives, and let peace prosper until the moon is no more. Let the king rule from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. 
Let the desert dwellers bow low before him. Let his enemies lick the dust. Let the kings of Tarshish and the islands bring tribute. Let the kings of Sheba and Seba present gifts. Let all the kings bow down before him. Let all the nations serve him. Let it be so, because he delivers the needy who cry out, the poor and those who have no helper. He has compassion on the weak and the needy. He saves the lives of those who are in need. He redeems their lives from oppression and violence. Their blood is precious in his eyes. Let the king live long. Let Sheba's gold be given to him. Let him be prayed for always. Let him be blessed all day long. Let, them be abundant, let there be abundant grain in the land. Let it wave on the mountaintops. Let its fruit flourish like Lebanon. Let it thrive like grass on the land. Let the king's name last forever. Let his name endure as long as the sun. Let all the nations be blessed through him and call him happy. Bless the Lord God, the God of Israel, the only one who does wondrous things. Bless God's glorious name forever. Let his glory fill all the earth. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, Jesse's son, are ended. We're going to have a call to worship, and so I'm going to read the part in italics, and you can read the part in bold. Since there's only a few of us here, you're going to have to uh, speak quite loudly. And for those who are at home, please follow along and feel uh, free to, to read the parts in bold as well. How joyful it is to celebrate the good news of God's love. We are called to be people. Darkness cannot claim us. Christ is risen.
are going to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sunday in which we remember not just the death of your Son, but his resurrection, the victory of life over death. We thank you that because of that resurrection, because of that empty tomb, we have a reason to hope. We have a reason to have courage. We have a reason to have peace. God, we ask that we would be able to understand the resurrection in a fresh way as we worship, as we hear the story as we reflect on what it means for Jesus to have walked out of that tomb. God, I pray for each one who is here and those who are watching the video, that you would be with them and you know the needs that they are going through. For those who are struggling physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, we ask that you would touch all of them and help them. We pray for wisdom for our government in these days in which there is so much to be juggled and balanced in terms of making sure that people get their vaccines and trying to keep the economy going and trying to keep the pandemic from spreading. Uh, We pray that you would give them wisdom. We pray for our church. We pray for each member of our church that you would be with us, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would help us to move forward in building your kingdom. And we pray for other churches of St. Catharines, that you would bless them as well. We thank you that whatever differences in tradition or denomination we might have, we share the belief in the risen Christ, and that is enough. We pray for other Baptist churches in our Niagara Hamilton Association and the uh, Canadian Baptists of Ontario and Quebec and Canadian Baptist Ministries. We pray for our partner church, Sherbrooke Baptist Church, and we ask that you would be with them and bless them, be with their pastor, equip them for ministry in the community that you have placed them in. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to guide us to be your people, to live in your resurrection life, and to be empowered by the resurrection power. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this familiar passage, the resurrection of Jesus. We pray that you would help us to get a fresh understanding of what it means for us today for Jesus to have been risen from the dead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to imagine what it was like on that very first Easter morning. And I want you to imagine specifically from the experience of the women who were on their way to the tomb. Now, I don't know how you imagine that normally, if you think of it as a just a pleasant stroll through a very beautiful garden on a, a, a bright, sunny dawn, uh, if that's the way you look at things, or if you look at things a little bit differently. Uh, one of the things that we should keep in mind is that when it says that it was at sunrise or at dawn, uh, based on the other Gospels, really we're talking about that time of darkness right before the dawn, that moment just before the light of the sun appears. So it is still quite dark. And they're walking through a place that is filled with tombs. Now, uh, I sometimes like to walk through cemeteries, but not when it's dark and not in a situation that is quite like this. And definitely, the, this place would not be as manicured and as kept as some of the cemeteries that we have today. And so there they are, wandering through this place of tombs while it is still dark. And besides the, uh, the fear that may, may have experienced, just the fact that they are surrounded by the dead, there is also the fact that these women were walking through this area completely unprotected. Uh, Beside any uh, superstition that there might be, there was the fact that you don't know who is around. There could be rough characters hiding behind any of those corners. You just don't know who might be there. And then you add to the fact that why were there no male disciples around? The reason is very simple. They were afraid. They were too afraid to be there. They were hiding inside. It was the women who were brave enough to come out and to uh, go to the tomb because they wanted to help prepare the body. The fact that they had a little bit more courage than those men. But the fact is that it was not a popular time to publicly acknowledge that you were a follower of Jesus. There was a reason why Peter denied Jesus three times. He was afraid for his life. And so this was a fearful time. So all of this that we've looked at so far tells us that these women have every reason to be afraid right at this moment. But things are going to get worse. There's a violent earthquake 
Have you ever been somewhere where there is an earthquake, where the ground begins to shake under you? Uh, I have been in uh, a few of them, very small, definitely not anything that I would consider to be a violent earthquake, but that must have been pretty scary. And then there's the angel, the angel whose face looks like lightning. Uh, We often think of angels as these cute little cherubs, but that's not what biblical angels are like at all. They are scary. In fact, the soldiers that are there, uh, whose job it is to stay all night, to guard this tomb, to make sure that no one takes the body, their experience in what has happened now has left them literally frozen in fear. They're almost like dead people. They are so scared. These soldiers who are paid to not be afraid are absolutely frozen in fear. And they're in the same place as these women. And these women have every reason to be afraid. And yet, what is it that the angel says to them? What's the first thing the angel says to these women? Do not be afraid. Well, that's easy for the angel to say. Uh, the the angel has no reason to be afraid. But the way that the angel is doing this, he's not just throwing out those words as an empty platitude. It may be the way that we would say, oh, you know, just cheer up. You know, just get over it. That's not what he's doing. He, the reason he's saying to them, do not be afraid, is because Jesus has risen. That is the reason why the angel can say to them, do not be afraid. And they go from this place, and we're told that they're still afraid, but it's fear mixed with joy. Uh, They realize that they are in the presence of something incredible going on, and so they still have a bit of fear, but at least they have joy. And as they are going from this place, they actually bump in to the risen Jesus, There he is, and they grab a hold of his feet, and they bow down, and they begin to to worship him. And what does Jesus say to them? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Yes, you have every reason on the outside for you to be afraid. I mean, this is a scary place. It's a scary time. There's a lot of things that are happening, but you don't have to be afraid. And the reason that they don't have to be afraid is because Jesus is risen from the dead. And that is the cure to their fear. So we're going to fast forward a couple thousand years, bring us up to the present. And I want to ask, has anything happened in the past year that may cause some fear, that may cause a little bit of anxiety for people, uh, that people might be concerned? We're going to have to just rack our brains to see if we can figure out something that has happened in the past year that might have caused something like this. Uh, We are just over a year into the pandemic, and this has caused fear in so many ways. There are people that are living in fear of uh, getting COVID-19 or of their loved ones, especially their elderly or the ones who have Uh, other conditions, uh, that they're really afraid that they're going to get COVID-19. For some people, the fear is about their mental health. They're they're afraid of of how much longer they can take being cooped up and not being around people, not being able to to fellowship with with people the way they would like to. Uh, Perhaps the fear is about the vaccine. Uh, the vaccine, maybe they're, they're worried that they're not going to get the vaccine, that their name is not going to be called, and uh, they're going to have to wait a long time. Maybe they're afraid that the vaccine won't work, or maybe they're afraid that they're, the vaccine was rushed and there's going to be side effects or something like that's going to happen. And of course, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories, and people think that there's trackers in them and all kinds of wild other ideas. People have fear when it comes to this. It's interesting that those who uh, dismiss those who take COVID-19 seriously are also living in fear. Their fear might not be for the actual virus. Their fear may be for the economy. 
They're afraid that businesses are going to close down. Maybe they're afraid of the, um, the steps that the government has taken. Either way, there has been a lot of fear when it comes to COVID-19. But aside from COVID-19, aside from the pandemic, there's plenty of things going on in our lives that would give us legitimate reasons to be afraid. Uh, It could be uh, concern about physical health. Maybe it's worrying about our friends and family who have received a diagnosis. Uh, Maybe it is the ongoing troubles of uh, strained relationships or uh, just the loneliness that is out there. Uh, There are so many different things that are going on. Worries about finances. Even if we weren't having a pandemic going on, plenty of people are worried about how they're going to pay their bill or uh, are they going to be able to keep their job or so on. One of the things that I love about the story of the women who are going to the tomb is there's not just one reason for them to be afraid. There's reason upon reason upon reason upon reason. And that speaks to our experience. Uh, Most of us don't have just one reason to be a bit anxious. There is reason upon reason upon reason. It just seems to keep piling up. And yet Easter morning whispers to us, do not be afraid. Now that's not saying that you are a bad person if you are experiencing some fear, if you're experiencing some anxiety or anything like that. That is not what it is saying. In fact, if you fear that you are in trouble because you're experiencing this, I encourage you to go to the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before his crucifixion and the emotional reaction that he, is, he has in that. And you see, he is experiencing fear and anxiety. He is quite upset about what is going on. And the gospel writers do not hide any of the details. We see that the women are still afraid. Even after being told by the risen Jesus, face to face, do not be afraid. They are still afraid. However, as I said before, when Easter morning tells us, do not be afraid, it's not just like, just cheer up. Have you ever been in a difficult situation and someone just kind of uh, throws a Christian platitude towards you, like uh, by saying these words, everything is going to disappear. That's not what is going on here. When we get the message, do not be afraid, it's backed up by the resurrection. Think about uh, all of the things that we might face in life. We might think, well, we can probably overcome, overcome most of the things that come our way. If we put enough effort into it, if we put enough money, enough research, uh, enough stubbornness, we might be able to overcome just about anything. But there's one thing that we can't overcome, and that's death. No matter how much we try to put it off, eventually death is going to come our way. And it seems as if death is the one enemy that cannot be defeated. And yet that is exactly what Jesus does in the resurrection. He defeats death. Where, O death, is your sting? Death is being mocked in that, those verses. Death has been overcome. What had seemed to be the greatest enemy has been defeated by Jesus. And it's because of that that we have a reason to not be afraid. Of course, we will face physical death. But the resurrection of Jesus was never meant to be just a one-off affair. It was to be the first fruits of our own resurrection. That no matter what happens to us, In this life, at some point, we are going to share in the resurrection of Jesus. And that speaks to our experience of fear. When I was a a teenager, the thing that uh, I lived in fear of the most, and I think that a lot of people of my generation experienced fear, was the fear of nuclear war. Uh, It was something that was always talked about. 
Uh, many times we would watch documentaries about what would happen and how close we were to, to nuclear war and, and so on. And the thing that we feared in the nuclear war was not just the, um, the devastation of the actual blast, the, the, the immediate damage that would happen where a bomb went off, because, of course, those bombs couldn't uh, land on every square inch of the planet. The, the concern was the radiation that would happen afterwards, that, uh, that long lingering effect of the radiation and how it would permeate every part of creation and totally transform it. And we, we see that even uh, today and the, the ongoing things with Chernobyl, uh, even though that happened so long ago that the radiation is still affecting things. And I bring this up to say that in some ways, the resurrection of Jesus was like a nuclear bomb. And so the immediate blast, of course, knocked the, the, uh, the stone from the tomb. But what really began to do something was the radiation, resurrection radiation, which permeates everything. It gets into every part of who we are as Christians. It's not even just about us having a hope of an afterlife, as much as that is important. It's also about how we live, how we face our circumstances. It doesn't mean that we are uh, protected from every bad circumstance that comes our way. But now we see it through a resurrection lens. We have been infected by resurrection power and infected by, uh, what, by that, I mean, in a very good way. The Easter morning whispers to us. It yells to us. Do not be afraid. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Let us pray. God, we thank you that Jesus is alive. And that resurrection power affects us. It covers us. It gets into every pore of who we are as Christians and as human beings. We thank you that Jesus shares his resurrection power with us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to come to the Lord's table figuratively, as we're not going to uh, actually approach the table, but we are still participating in the meal as we remember what uh, Jesus did for us. The path to the empty tomb came through the cross. And I am going to read to you from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 26, and starting at verse 26. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which seals the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it, new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us give thanks for the bread and the cup. God, as we think about Jesus gathered with his disciples just a few days before the empty tomb, just a few days before that first Easter Sunday, a few days before the disciples would have their lives absolutely turned upside down, they had no idea what was about to happen. All they knew is that their friend was in danger and he was explaining what would happen to him physically through that bread and that cup. That with the broken bread, it would point to the broken body. And with the cup of wine, it would point to the shed blood of Jesus. 
We thank you that we can participate in this meal, remembering the love that was demonstrated, but that we do it through the perspective of the resurrection, that we know that the cross was not the end. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I would encourage you to peel off the first part of your little cup and to take the wafer. And you can pull down your your mask for this. The body of Christ, broken for you. Let us eat the bread. After supper, Jesus took the cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us drink from the cup. God, we thank you for the bread and the cup. We thank you even more for the body and the blood. That body and blood that was broken and spilled, and yet on the third day was brought back together, risen from the dead. And yet those wounds were still there. Even in Jesus' glorified body, the holes were still in his hand, still in his side, remembrances of his great love for us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to conclude our service with a special song provided by Grace Notes. And we're very thankful that they have recorded another video and have made that available to us.
Before we have our blessing, just a, a couple of housekeeping announcements. Uh, please take your communion cup with you, and as you go out the open door there, you'll see there's a little garbage can. Uh, just put that in there uh, as you are going out. And also, I know that you're going to want to visit here in the building. I know you're going to want to, because I want to too. But we're going to ask that you wait till you get outside before you visit. We want to keep things as safe as possible. And now our blessing. And now may the God of peace, who brought back again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, all that is, this is pleasing to him. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.